Hi guys, it's Matt from Maxon UK here and in this video we're going to be looking at how to export Sculpt for animation. So in a previous video we looked at how to start yourself off sculpting something like this raptor. But the question is, what do you do with it once you've sculpted? So one of the things that you can do is take the layers down and bake out the sculpt to use with animation because this is far too many polys to be able to do any decent animation with and something that you wouldn't want to be attempting to rig or weight but the base mesh is absolutely fine because it only contains a few polygons so how do we get this information that makes the nice sculpt onto that well this is something that you can do through the sculpt setup so if I just change my layout to the sculpt and go to my bake sculpt objects. This is the option that we're going to be using. Okay, so what you need to do is you click that and then you get this pop-up menu which allows you to enter some information about baking objects. So the first thing it says it was, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to put this? So I'm just gonna quickly choose the desktop and I'm going to call it a uh, dino sculpt bake. OK, that way I know that is what's going on there. That's absolutely fine. And you can choose your images, uh, image type, uh, TIFF, PNG, so on and so forth. Um, for this, I'm not going to change it. I'm going to use TIFF. And 32 bits per channel is fine because I'm going to be using this within cinema. You can choose the size of your map that it's going to pr um, produce and you can tell it to lock its ratio and for this one I'm going to choose single file as well so I don't want it to produce multiple ones although I am only going to produce one so it won't really matter you've got some presets there that you can use and the 8000 is sort of like the maximum that it will go to because largely that's what most machines and software will read then you can go to your options and this is where you choose what it is that you want to be using so I am going to choose a displacement map now, it doesn't matter which version of Cinema 4D you have, whether or not you're using Body Paint 3D or one of the versions of Cinema, you can use this to export. That's not a problem. However, in order to see the displacement map within the viewport, largely to animate, you are going to need to make sure that you are using either Cinema 4D Studio or Cinema 4D Visualize. They are the two that contain sub polygon displacement which will allow the displacement map to view properly in your editor but for the moment it doesn't matter with this uh, I am using studio at the moment so that I can show you what it looks like when it comes out so this is the displacement map that's what I'm going to be using optimal mapping currently is off if you haven't done any UV mapping and you're happy for cinema 4d to just do what it's going to do you can turn that on and choose cubic okay now you can include top levels and that might mean that there are some levels above this that you are not yet viewing but I haven't got any so I don't need to make sure that that is ticked but I need to say which levels I want to be using and the level that I want to be using is level 6 so that's the one with the most detail that is my sculpt layer that I am using and you can see that most of my details are on layer 6 and that's what I'm looking at at the moment and then it says what level do you want me to project it onto? Now level zero is where it was unsubdivided. You're going to have to have a little bit of experimenting to see which base model works for you. There's very little point in going straight for five because you're not going to save that much in polygons. I mean, there might be a big difference, but you know, I mean, at the moment I'm using 13 million polygons, you know, which is quite a lot. And level zero, I think was was very few whatsoever so what you'll have to do is you'll have to try it to see what works best for you and make sure that your polygons all match nicely but I'm gonna leave that at zero for the moment just so we can see what it does and then you go to your settings okay so you can choose your displacement method whether or not you want to use RGB or the intensities and stuff like that but I'm going to leave that as is okay then you can click preview and you can see what that's going to look like so if I just click that it will take a little bit of time so I'll click that in a minute but this is the uh, useful one here create result copy so what it will do it will create a second version of my Raptor body here and it will apply the displacement map to it so I can see the two side by side and you can see the difference so if I just click preview and I shall probably have to speed this up a second 
Okay, there you go. You can see that it gives you a basic preview. Uh, and you can see whether or not you think that's going to work for you. Now this is a copy of the UV map that it is going to create for you. Okay, so that's because I told it to use Cubic. It did have its own UV map as being something that was in Cinema 4D already, but I wanted to show you what Cubic mapping would do. It basically unwraps it, flattens it out, and then gives you an idea of what it might look like. Okay, so if you are going to use this within Cinema 4D and you're using standard textures or you're going to use maybe one of the body paint painting features so it doesn't matter what your UV is like, then that's absolutely fine. Okay, that's not going to be a problem for you. If you're intending on doing other things and you do need a UV map for it, then you're going to have to UV map this properly, but I shall cover that in another tutorial. So if you're happy with that, then what I might do, um, I could turn that off and we could have a look at its uh, normal mapping the way it's uh, already set up, if that hasn't already overwritten. But what I should do now is I shall click Bake and that will create that um, file here at this location that has my dino bake and I will catch you in a second. Okay, there we go. So, what we can do is whilst this still processes I believe, if I have a look at my objects, there we go, yeah it's still thinking about it. Okay, there we go, you can see that we now have two copies, we have the body with the sculpt and we have the body using the displacement map. So now if I just hide that we can see that we've got our displacement, um, our original mesh there, and you can see it's still got the very basic uh, polygonal model underneath. But if I render, it applies that detail there. And it's not done too bad a job. You can see we've got some really nice detail on, along the tail and the legs and the head, but the issue that we do have is somewhere along here around the arms and the feet. Now, this is normally where I would find that we are putting too much detail onto a too lower mesh. So this is where I would potentially change this up to level one, maybe level two, depending on what I think I could get away with, so that I have got a little bit more polygonal detail underneath my displacement map to add. Okay, so that normally solves all of those problems. But what that means is now that you have got a nice basic mesh underneath to be able to rig and weight with not a lot of polygonal detail underneath and then all of the textures that you need to give your dinosaur its wrinkly look without being too memory hungry on your PC. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out blog.maxon.co.uk